All right, <clears throat> I'm going to do a, a little uh, PowerPoint that explains what E is, uh, the natural base E. Um, really what E is, uh, it is just a, um, it's another number, just like you might see uh, pi or i, it, it represents a number. Um, and we don't want to write the number over and over, so we just write E to take its place. Uh, and it's actually 2.71828, and it goes on forever. It's irrational, um, and there's a special way of finding it. So how they come up with this number? Well, first off, let's think about if you have uh, $300, uh, you want to put in a 3% annual interest, and you want to compute the balance after one year if it's compounded. Let's say it's compounded yearly. You would type it in like this, so 0 0.03 um, over 1, because it's happening once a year, so it's really just 1.03, and you get $3.09. Um, if we want to do it um, quarterly, then I would do 3% divided by 4, but then it would be 4 times a year. And notice that's slightly more. It's a little bit more. And then if I want to do it monthly, um, then it would be 12 times. Are divided by 12 and 12 times a year. So you're going up a little bit every time, but is there a limit to the maximum amount of interest you can make? That's kind of the idea behind this. Um, so let's look at, there we go. Uh, I'm taking several clicks to get through my <laughs> PowerPoint here. So let's just change it now. Let's, let's make it simpler. Let's make 100%. So if we were making 100% and it's compounded for one year, okay? So for one year, now if it was done yearly, you would get um, what you had plus 100%, so it basically would double. Okay, so you would double. Now, what if that, and the reason why there's a 1 here is because 100% as a decimal is 1, so 1 divided by 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2, 2 to the first power is 2. Now, if I did it quarterly, I would take that 1 divided by 4, but then it would happen 4 times um, a year, and I'd get 2.4414. So whatever I started with, it would be worth 2.44 of what I put in. You know, like the, the first one, I would double my amount. Here, I, I would take my amount times 2.44. What if it was monthly? Divide by 12 and compound it 12 times. Now you're looking at your original amount times 2.613. So more than doubling, about two and a half times more than that even, than what you originally started with. If it was weekly, it'd be 2.69 what you started with. Daily? 2.714 times the amount you started with. Minutely, I'm sorry, hourly, 2.718. Minutely, there's 525,000 minutes in a year. You would get a little bit more, not a whole lot more, but it is the number keeps going up. But does it ever stop going up is a big thing. Like, is there a limit to it? If I do it secondly, um, it would be 2.71828. Now, what's faster than secondly? Um, by secondly, millisecondly, uh, nanosecondly, we could keep doing that. But the very fastest you could do is continuously. So what if we there was no time between compounds, if it's just always compounding? And you think that's how populations grow. They're, they're just constantly growing. It's not like um, if you talk about cats, they don't all have their kittens on the first of the month. Like, boom, everyone, you know, all, all the... Um, Reproducing happy now. You know, it doesn't happen like that. Or you think humans, every day, every minute, every second, babies are being born. They're not all born at once. We don't add 3% suddenly at this moment. It's just continuously happening. So this is how things happen in, in real life. Things continuously grow. So if, if I want to know continuously, well, how many continuous moments are there in a year? You know, like here, there's um, 31 million seconds in a year. Well, how many continuous moments are in a year? It would be infinite. There are infinitely many. So I would, I would divide one by infinity, add one, and then take that uh, to the infinity power for one year times one. That equals E. So if you take E to the first power in your calculator, you actually get um, what you would multiply your original amount by to get um, if, it, if it's compounding continuously. And now if, if it wasn't 100%, again, this 100% was always this second one in the exponent. So it'd be e to the first power times 1. So if it was 50%, it'd be e to the first power times 0.5, or e to the 0.5 power. 
So what happens is the rate is now in the exponent of e, okay? So that, that's where e comes from. It has to do with compounding, compounding infinitely many times um, with no time between compounds. Okay, so going back to your paper now, um, if we're compounding continuously, um, it's a slightly different formula. So uh, instead of, you know, up here we use y equals, and then it was the initial amount 1 plus, well, I should say p, p equals the initial amount rate divided by the number of compounds into the t, um, that's for compounding a number of times. Now if it's continuously, which is also known as exponential growth, they call it, it's growing exponentially, then the amount is going to equal your principal still, but now instead of having this rate in parentheses, it's just the base is e. So here the base was 1 plus whatever your rate was divided by the number of compounds a year. Here it's e. And then your rate goes into the exponent along with time. Okay, so a lot of people just memorize it, memorize it as pert, p-e-r-t. Well, it's p times e to the r-t power. Okay, so for graduation, you receive $5,000. You decide to put it in an account that gives 7.5% compounded continuously. I'll be honest, I've never seen anybody, any bank, offer continuous um, interest, but let's just say it does. Um, so if we compound continuously, how much will it be worth in four years when you graduate from college? And then how about when you retire at age 65? So the amount would equal 5,000 and then E to the, and my rate is 7.5. You still make that a decimal, so move that two places. So 0.075. Notice I don't need to put a 1 on this. You know, if, if it was 100%, I'd put a 1 on there. Okay, so E is already keeping what you had because E is actually 2 point something, 2.71. So that's in there, okay? And then the time for this would be 4 years later. So I'm going to take 0.075 times 4 into the exponent there. And let me show you how to type it in the calculator. So you would type in so 5,000. And then um, there is actually an E button right there. See the, the blue E? So I push second and then that button. And that brings this up. And then the exponent, if you have a newer calculator, you can just type it. If you have an older calculator, you have to put parentheses around this. So I'll just practice by putting the parentheses for you times four in parentheses. So um, you would have, at the end of four years, you'd have 6,700. So $6,749.29. Now, at the end of 65 years, if I want to bring some, basically I'm just changing the 4 to a 65. So A equals 5,000 E to the 0 0.075 times 65. If you want to bring up the last thing that you entered, um, push second, and then there's an entry button right here, entry. And that's like a copy and paste. I'm going to go back and change that 4 to a 65, end parentheses. $654,000. So $654,870.77. So um, on this guy, yeah, this would be more than enough to retire on. So if you had a $5,000 graduation gift, you could put it into this account and just leave it there. And you can go work, you don't have to save for retirement, just let that thing ride. So the, the sooner you start saving for retirement, the less you have to save because it, it makes its own money. Now suppose you want to have um, one million dollars. So this was good, but I want one million dollars. How much do you need to put in, in into a stock that makes $12,000, um, I'm sorry, 12% compound continuously? Not a realistic problem because you can't predict that. You know, stock market goes up and down. But my amount, my A, I want it to be a million. I don't know what amount I need to put in. So my principal, I'm just going to say P, E to the, and then 0 0.12. And then um, we'll say when you're 65, let's say that you're 18 right now. Okay, so let's take 65 minus 18. So we'll say 47 years later. So what amount would you need to put in right now to be a millionaire if it made 12% compounded continuously? So first off, this is a constant. That's a number. If I put in the calculator, I can find a number. So I'm going to divide by e to the 0.1 times 47 power. So in my calculator, I have 1 million divided by, and then in parentheses, e to the, and 
then parentheses, 0.12 times 47 power, and all your parentheses, and your P, because all that's left here is P, your principal would be $3,552.87. So if you could just somehow get $3,500 you know, $3, about, put in this account, you could be a millionaire when you turn 65, just by not touching that you know, $3,552. So that's pretty crazy how, how uh, exponential growth works. Um, probably not a totally realistic problem, but that's where I say, like, if you can possibly save anything into a, it's called an IRA. You can open up right now. You can walk to any bank and say, I'd like to open an IRA. Start depositing $20 a week into it. If you have a job, just take $20, put it into that, and just let that thing go. When you turn 65, you'll have a lot of money that you, it was only a few dollars now, but it becomes a lot of money then. So, so anyway, let me know if you have any questions with continuous growth.